Okay, let's do a simple, uh, if, if you get a, a, a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator, um, you'll want to measure something and one of the things you'll probably have is an attenuator. So, so let's see if we can measure an attenuator. Uh, I'll get one here. This is a 6 dB atten attenuator. And it says 6 dB attenuation, but at what wavelengths, right? You want to see if it's equal 6 dB across all wavelengths. And so that's what a machine like this can measure. So you need to um, set the span that you want, and we'll just leave it open. It's going from 0 to 3.2 gigahertz. Then we need to turn on the tracking generator, which is here, and it says tracking, tracking generator on, off. You need to set a level. Now we're going to be testing attenuators, and so uh, we want a fairly high level out of the source because we're going to be attenuating it before we measure it. So let's go ahead and set the um, output to 0 dBm, all right? And we can say tracking generator on. Now, Nothing happens because uh, we don't have any completed circuit. This is the output, this is the input, we need to go all the way around. So if I connect the output to the input, um, we should be able to read uh, 0 dBm, and it's right there up at the top, all right? And uh, we could set the amplitude down, and, and there it is. And it's, it's fairly flat. It wiggles maybe a little bit out here and everything, but we want it absolutely flat. We want an accurate measurement, okay? And so in our tracking generator, um, we can normalize the tracking generator, okay? The way that we normalize that, we say store to reference. Now, what that just did was it took this waveform and it stored it in memory. And then we can hit the normalize button, which will just take this, the active trace, and it will subtract the reference trace. And we will get a, a perfectly flat line because we're subtracting what it really is, right? So. Um, we have zero dB now, okay? And it's nice and flat. So if we put in the attenuator in the circuit, uh, we should have a nice flat line as well, just six dB lower than it used to be, right? So let's do that. And sure enough, we have a straight line and it's six dB lower than it used to be. Now we, need, we want to zoom in a little bit on that. So we can say, okay, we want, uh, uh, scales per division. We'll do five instead. We can take a look. It looks like about it's about six, and it starts to wiggle over here, okay? Well, what if we want to look at it really, really close, okay? We'll set our scale per division at one, and then, oops, it fell off the bottom. So how can we get it back up? Well, if we go back to that tracking generator, when we do this normalization, we can say uh, we want to set the center point to uh, minus six, okay? And now minus six will be right here at the uh, at the 50% level, okay? And that's what this is. So it's a bit confusing on, on this particular one. The reference level is what value do you want this A minus B thing to happen at? We want it to happen at minus six. And then the reference position is where on the screen do we want it, okay? And this just moves moves it up and down. And so this percentage means if we set it to 10, um, it's 10% it's per, of the way up. If we want that up at the top, we would say 100%, okay? And so a lot of times when you're doing attenuation, okay, let's remove the attenuator again. And uh, we will go through the process again, all right? We will say, okay, we want to store the reference A, and we want to we want to normalize. And let's see here what's going on. Let's do a preset. Let's go back to zero because everything's kind of messed up. So we'll do a preset. Turn on our tracking generator. Okay. We'll turn the generator on. We want to have a zero dBm, uh, and it's up there at the top. Okay. We want to do a reference store and a normalize. And now it's happening here at the 50 yard line, which is this 50%. If we set this to 100, now it's going to be at the very, very top of the screen. So attenuators will always go down. So a lot of times you'll want to set it at the very, very top. And then when we um, hook up our attenuator, it should go down because we're attenuating. And there we go, it went down, okay? And now when we set the amplitude uh, units, 
scale of one, it'll be down. So now zero is at the top and then minus six is down here at the bottom. And you can see how it wiggles. So it's wiggling a little bit out here. We'll put on a marker. Uh, we'll get our marker out here. So it's pretty flat to about two, 2.3 gigahertz. And then it has a little bit of wiggly. It's still within a dB though, right? So attenuators aren't perfect. They're going to have a little bit of, uh, it'll rattle around in that attenuator a little bit. And also in the setup and stuff. So it won't be exactly, uh, exactly 60 B, but pretty much, pretty much everywhere. Okay. Now that we're, now that we're, uh, uh, calibrated, we can test other things. Okay. So here I'm going to test a 20 DB pad, right? And I put on my 20 DB pad. And I'm not going to be able to see anything all because at the, the very bottom it says minus 10. So we need to go back to that tracking generator. We want to set the uh, things all around the, the 50 yard line here. And we're going to set the reference level to minus 20 because I know that's about what this thing is. So there we go. So the middle here is at minus 20. We have a minus 20 um, attenuator in there and it works pretty well up to here, then it kind of droops off, okay? So this attenuator is only specified to one gigahertz, okay? So let's set our marker to one gigahertz. So really, this is what the manufacturer was guaranteeing it to, but it's actually working okay outside of that. It's dropping down maybe a, a dB, but it's still usable out there. Um, let's take a look at the, uh, Another uh, another device here. The um, 6 dB pad was working pretty good everywhere, and this particular one is is specified to 12 and a half gigahertz. Okay, this one is specified to one gigahertz. Uh, this one is specified to six gigahertz, and so it should be good. So even though these attenuators all have the same shape. <laughs> They all looks like they're about the same. They are manufactured different tolerances. This one says it's good to six gigahertz, so it should look pretty good all the way across the screen. But this is a 30 dB pad, so we're gonna have to set that center point uh, again for 30 dB, a reference instead of minus 20, we'll set it to minus 30. And there we go, you can see it's pretty nice and flat all the way across because it's guaranteed to six gigahertz, all right? Um, so I have a variety of different attenuators. Uh, this is a nice way to test them. Spectrum analyzers are uh, fairly decent in, in uh, giving you a, a absolute numbers. You need to read the specification of your, of your spectrum analyzer. In order to measure these really, really correctly, I did a video once on the absolute perfect way to measure these, which is to use a, a DC source and a power meter. Me measure the source, put this in line, measure, the, uh, uh, measure it with a power meter on the other end and measure the true attenuation of the thing with a very, very accurate power meter. That's, that's the way they would do it in production. Um, and uh, unless they have some tolerance band that they can use an instrument like this. But um, yeah, there you go. I wanted to show one last um, attenuator and something that you might end up getting in, in trouble with. And yeah, it's this one here. So here's a nice attenuator. Let's pop it on. And um, we will have to reset our center because this is a 60 dB attenuator. Uh, we'll set this to 60. And you can see that it's measuring really, really poorly. Now that's not the, the uh, attenuator. The attenuator is spot on but the dynamic range of this instrument isn't large enough to measure 60 dB. We started at zero and now the signal out the other end is minus 60 and the settings that I have on the instrument don't allow for that type of dynamic range. Now, we could probably narrow it down and, uh, and do a better job. So let's, uh, let's try that. This attenuator is good to uh, 12.4 gig gigahertz, but I think we can do a little bit better here. Let's give it a try. Let me do a preset. I'm going to set our frequency from 100 megahertz to 200 megahertz. Okay. Let's say I'm going to be measuring something around 144 megahertz. So I'm going to go between zero and, and, uh, and 200. Stop frequency 200 megahertz. Okay, zero to 200. All right, 
I'm going to turn on the tracking generator. I'm going to set my uh, output level to zero. I'm going to store it and attenuate it and uh, or, uh, normalize it. So now there we're at zero. I'm going to go here to the 60 dB pad and we'll see if we can't set some uh, bandwidths and lower the noise floor on our measurement and see if we can't uh, see if we can't actually see something. Oh, come on. Sometimes these little SMAs just don't want to thread on. Okay, we will set our reference here to minus 60. And yeah, there we go. So we have a better uh, uh, noise floor in the instrument because we've changed the sweep and the resolution bandwidth and stuff. We could change the bandwidth down a bit if we wanted to. We could probably even make it a better measurement. Yeah, there we go. See, we've we've Every time you change the resolution bandwidth, you're increasing the dynamic range of the instrument. And now we're getting a very, very uh, uh, much nicer picture here. We can change our scale to uh, 1 dB. And there we go. We're measuring about, you know, 58 and a half, something like that. Um, so uh, at the end here, I'll show you some screen captures between my uh, HP VNA and, and this instrument. Um, this is the 6, um, six dB attenuator. Here's the 20 dB attenuator. Here's the 30 dB attenuator. And then finally the uh, 60 dB attenuator. Anyway, quick video, uh, give, you, give you an idea of tracking generators, how you uh, zero them out, and uh, how you might increase the dynamic range by, uh, by zooming in.